What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in here live on the Viewpoint Zone. My name is Javon Livingston. Alongside me, we got Mr. Tristan Roberts as we get set for kickoff here on Viewpoint Zone. Kick is off, going to be fielded at about the 30-yard line there. A couple yards back, going to be tackled pretty much immediately there. Hurricanes take the kick and make it up to around the 31 before being stopped. And I apologize there for a little bit of a little bit of a rush start here to go on deeper zone right here before kickoff, but we got to back up rolling uh, for the start of the first kickoff. How you doing tonight, Tristan? I'm doing good, man. Uh, great time to have some football playing. A uh, little rain outside, but it's, it's this prime football weather, as we know. It's always better when rain's out. See, see what the teams can adjust to. So yeah, good matchup here. Uh, through uh, Bluffton is believe three A or four A versus two A. We'll see, we'll see how we see how we go. Yeah, four A versus two A here tonight. Bluffton going to start off on the defense, and this exciting Hampton County offense going to start off on the outf offense. And they've been since they started off two years ago. Well, last year, excuse me. It's been exciting here for Hampton County. First down and ten, and away we go. Motion, a quick handoff up the middle, going to be for a short game. David Risher on the carry. Isaiah Bastain on the stop. Hurricanes pick up a yard, second and nine. Yeah, like you said, this is a, an exciting game. You know, we have basically a battle of styles going on. So you have your Hurricanes who, you know, like to uh, pound the football, like to pound the rock. They're a run-heavy team. And we have Bluffton, more of the, the air it out, make you stop the pass type of team. As we have a bad snap here on Hampton's side, and the quarterback's able to fall on it. Yeah, just a bad bad the snap right there. Going the to go, <laughs> gonna have to go back just a little bit there, right between the legs, a little bit of a Chris Berman, a little bit of whoops <laughs> <laughs> right there for them. And there, that's the third uh, and 20. And there goes the effect of that rain right there making it hard to snap the ball. And there also goes uh, a situation Hampton County doesn't really want to see themselves in half the time, especially because they're not really a passing team. They get all these yards on like, on just runs, straight runs. It, it's going to be hard, especially on this third down. You, they want to try to limit these mistakes as much as they can. Drop back, quick throw around the right-hand side, a little bit too far ball, going to be incomplete. Pass intended for LJ Rivers, incomplete. Tollison on coverage for the Bobcats. And that brings up fourth down. Punt team coming out here for Hampton County. We got two returners back for Bluffton. Add punt. He hangs up in. And. Bluffton's going to start their drive at about Hampton County's 34. Not an ideal situation here. The Bobcats now first and 10 on the Hurricane 34-yard line. And here comes that Bobcat offense. Point cabinets. McCarthy with the snap. Handoff number 23 gets about six, Cordell seven Holly yards. On Cordell Holly on the carry. About six, seven yards. Going to be carry on the stop. second down in about Bob three. Looks like they're going to hurry up here. Eight. We'll call it seven and McCarthy with the snap. Handoff to Dolly again. Let him fight for those extra Dolly yards. And it looks like he's going to get enough for the first down on that carry. Bluffton here going to hurry up again. And that is a Bobcat. 
First this, down. This right. time, everybody in spread formation. Have to watch Looking out for this receiving over. core. Quick pass. And it's picked off by Agent Zero, Jalen Singleton. And it looks like he's going to take this one all the way back. Touchdown, Hampton County. Oh, Horton. What a start for Hampton County on the defensive side of the ball. You can see the DB just reads the route, absolutely jumps in, able to come down with the pick in the rain, and just has the speed to make it all the way down. Great start by this Hampton County defense. Oh, Horton. Kick is up and good, hitting and the, the palm trees. For the extra point is good. Seven zero Hampton. And I was gonna kind of start talking about the the receiving threats that Bluffton kind of has on this offensive side of the ball, having four receivers on uh, over 100 yards through three games. These are spreading the ball out pretty well. But then as you see, we have a, we have a pick six occurring with a, good defensive, with a good defensive back play by this Hampton County defense. Another high squib here. It looks like they're just going to take that down. It down it at the 39, the looks like. Oh. First and 10 on their own 38. Now we have Bluffton looking to, to try to reset, see what happened on that last drive. Just a bad read there by Aiden McCarthy. But we'll see how he bounces back from this, uh, from that pick six. Knowing that they're probably going to come out with a couple runs, just try to try to calm the offense down. Never mind. Screen pass here completed. The ball slips out of his hand. Looks like that was Roman Benjamin Roman there Benjamin on the, the on the reception. Ball just slipped the out of his hand at the last down, minute. Right the 41. Three yard gain for the Bobcats. Looks like it's gonna be second and seven here for your Bluffton Bobcats though. We have an official meeting real quick. Moving them over to the left hash. With a single back formation, Benjamin in motion. McCarthy with the snap. Looks for a star receiver. Mr. Cordell gets about three on that on that reception. With the reception. It'll go down at the 45. Looks like it's going to be third and third three. And three. Okay. Like, like I mentioned on that play right there, Carnell Warren, one of their star receivers, having the most receiving yards on their team. As we have Mr. Holly with another carry, and he breaks one. And breaks another. And he's down at about the, Holly, big run for the, the 35. Of Hampton County. Hurricane 35. Oh, Big Bobcat. run there. Big call. By Bluffton showing that they can keep it versatile. Don't have to only rely on the pass here. They're going up. Hurry up. Mr. Holly with another carry. And he has a 
about oh, yeah, six. Down somewhere around the 20, so it's going to be second and four. Mark it, 29. Nothing but good carry so far for this Bluffton run game, even though we know them as a passing team. Get another handoff to Mr. Dolly. Dolly again with the carry down to the 25. It's going to be about third and one here for this Marks Bluffton offense. Six yards short, third down. Audible call here is McCarthy still in single, still in shotgun. Hand off again to Holly as he runs over a defender to pick up that first down. That'll be enough for another Bobcat. Brought to you by DR Horton. And Bluffton just trying to kind of lullaby this this Hampton County defense with this run game and then try to air it out on them. You know, the pass what they're going to give them. So we're going to have an injury timeout here. We'll be right back here on Beaver Tone. We're back here on Buford Zone. Kind of missed a play there. Sorry for that. Uh, has a carry but for about three. Going to be a good enough for a Bluffton first down. First down brought to you by D.R. Horton. Bluffton here is going to motion out Holly. Going to do a swing pass, and there's a flag down on the field. We'll see what it's for. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first out. Got a false start here on the offense. Going to bring him back a, a good five yards. Going to be first and 15 now here for this Bluffton offense. High snap here. Aiden McCarthy can't find it. Ball pops out again, and it looks like Hampton County has it again. Another turnover in Hurricane territory for Bluffton, and this is just a bad start so far. As you can see here on the replay, just a high snap. McCarthy wasn't able to locate it. Tried to follow on the ball, and it popped out after he fell down on it, kind of just with the pressure and the, the slipperiness of the ball. Hampton County player was right there to scoop it up.
Tampa County getting their second try on offense. Like we mentioned, this is a pound the pound the ball team as we have a flag here. It looks like somebody moved on the Hampton County front. And that's indeed what it is. They're moving back five. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Going to be first and 15 here for the Hampton County offense. Like I was saying, they're like we said, they're a pound the rock team, and their main back is Agent Zero, Mr. Jalen Singletary, who's had a couple of big games, ha has over 300 yards rushing on the season. Is that who they give the ball to right now? Slips up, breaks a tackle, and gets that penalty yardage back. Going to be a going to be about a second and seven. It looks like so far. He picks up about nine yards, eight yards maybe. Second down and seven. Second down and seven here for this Hampton County offense. Hand off here again to Agent Zero. Bounces outside. And it looks like he stretched out enough, but they're going to mark him down about a yard short of the first down here. Singletary, such a dynamic back, able to able to break tackle, has the strength to break tackles, but also has the agility and speed to have those break rate ones when you need it. It's going to be 31 here for this Hampton County offense. Receiver in motion. Looks like they're going to call for an audible here. We're going to have a timeout here by Hampton Time County. Hampton, that's their first. And with that timeout, we'll be right back here on Buford Zone. Here on Buford Zone, handoff again to Agent Zero, Jalen Singletary, and it looks like he's got enough for that first down. Singletary again on the carry. Sam Lewis on the stop for the Bobcats. They're going to give Singletary a little break here now. As you see him rushing off on the side. Grant here, pump fake the screen, didn't have anybody, and just kind of runs out of bounds for a Grant loss of about three. Dive out of bounds around the 40. Going to be second and 13, it looks like. Second and 12 and a half. Singletary right back here in the game. Grant with the snap, handoff. Excuse me, that's Javon Reiser with the carry right there. Going to be about a gain of five. Going to bring him to a, a third and a third and eight. Third and seven and a half, if you want to. 
Hampton County has to find a way to get out of these third and long situations that they're putting themselves into. We have a handoff to Reischer again. Breaks a tackle. Good blocks there by that Hampton County front. And it looks like he's just a yard short on the carry. Now we'll see what this Hampton County this Hampton County coaching staff is going to do. Seeing how the last punt went, it looks like they're going to keep their offense out there. Grant with a QB sneak, and he falls forward for enough. Gets more than enough for that first down, keeping this Hampton County drive alive. But this Hampton County team giving you kind of a little season summary. 3-0 uh, and on the year, so this is an undefeated matchup here in Beaufort County. Uh, they have been dominant kind of running the ball like we've seen so far. Just their linemen are able to move people, and their running backs are able to, to make ways and break tackles. So that's kind of the, the the story of their life here in Hampton. And we have a pitch here to Mr. Reicher. <laughs> kind of trucks his own teammate. Gets a gain of about five on that carry. It's going to be second down and five here for your Hampton okay. County Hurricanes. With that carry. Gain of about six. Second and four hurricanes. Grant gets the snap. Hand off to Reicher again. He's not able to, to break a tackle that time. It's going to be about a gain of two. Going to be third and three. Here for these Hurricanes. It'll be third down. And this is a great strategy for this this Hurricane team, keeping the ball out of McCarthy and this explosive bluffing offense's hands by just pounding the rock, getting this defensive line tired. We have Reiser in the backfield again. Bad snap. Grant falls on it, and that is a costly mistake right there for this Hampton County offense. Got it to about third and short where they want it. Got it to about third and short where they want it. Ball gets loose on the snap. Mistake again on a bad snap, causing Grant to fall on it. Now they have to bring out this punt unit. Didn't have a good showing last time. Kind of just guide the kick. So see if they can improve on that. Just try to get it further. And that's a, a very, very good punt right there. Takes a lovely bounce, downs it at about and the 20-yard line. 15-yard line. Apologize for my mistake there. And here comes this offense for Bluffton again. Bluffton. Season summary on them. They're, like we mentioned, undefeated matchup, so they're 3-0 and as well. Or not undefeated. I apologize. Bluffton is 2-1. Uh, two dominating wins at Whale Branch and uh, Andrew Jackson, but then took a tough loss to the to a team out of Georgia. I believe their name was the Savannah County uh, Yellow Jackets. That's who they lost to. So we'll see how Bluffton do fares tonight. Two, two drives, two turnovers. As we have Holly here with another carry, and Hampton County is able to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. No yards. It's going to be second down and 10 here for this Bluffton offense. No gain on the play. Second and 10. Bluffton heading out wide now this time. Getting Holly out that backfield, forcing their, forcing the Hampton County to play some more coverage. McCarthy with the drop back, rolls out of the pocket. 
McCarthy launches it, and it's going to be a throwaway out of bounds. Hampton County doing a great job That's defending this aerial attack complete. so far. Third and ten, Bobcats. Going with another empty backfield here. McCarthy with the drop back. Spins off of a tackle. McCarthy taking the run. Five, oh, and just misses Carnell Warren. Just misses Carnell Warren on the improvised throw and run. That will be gonna, the end of the first quarter of play. We'll switch into the fields, and we have a fourth down situation. That's going to be the Rogers. end of our first quarter on that play, and we'll be right back here on Beaufort Zone. Your score, 7-0, Hampton County leads. back folks no we said the first quarter was ending but it looked like there was a penalty on the play an illegal forward pass brought him back five yards from the spot of the foul gonna have one um time down to end just to end the quarter can't end the quarter on a on an offensive flag with the punt here by Bluffton it's like Singletary is there to receive it it's gonna pin Hampton County at about the 49 yard line of Bluffton and with that, that'll be the end of your first quarter. Your score, 7-0 Hampton County when we come back here on Beaufort Zone. So the Hurricanes have it now. First and 10 from the Bobcat, 49-yard line. everybody here live on Buford Zone. We're back for the second quarter. I uh, wanted to apologize to everyone personally for all of the uh, all of the technical difficulties we had to start here tonight with all the, the weather and everything like that. And for some reason, our stream was just uh, having some a problem getting going there, even though we got plenty of bit rate. But we got a big carry around the right-hand side. That's going to be single Terry all the way to the end zone for Hampton and County. Pick up another six. On the carry. Quick carry all the way around the right side. The first down, and we got a big carry all the way down the sideline. And big touchdown here. Stuff the way and Singletary has been a monster in these first three games for uh, Hampton County. Been there. They're kind of uh, the horseback, if you would, if you would say. Like we said, he's only he's only like, I think, believe he's six foot one sixty. 
but he still has the strength to break off tackles. Like we said, he still has the agility to kind of juke defenders out and still has the speed in order to beat defenders out like you see on that play. An extra point, Lumen here getting uh, ready to go. That kick is going to be up and plenty like right, enough so into the net. The and attack on one more extra point for Hampton County. And this is exciting to see, like you said, a 4A versus 2A matchup. You mentioned that earlier in the day. And, 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 that, and this is what you want to see. A solid 4A program in Bluffton versus a, two, a very good 2A program. Had a good season uh, last year. Unfortunately, just fell a little bit short. But they had a big chance to bid to go all the way last year with the, with the crew in the Hampton County Hurricanes. And being a new school. And you kind of want to see if that was more of a new school. Nobody having film on them. Nobody knowing what's exactly coming. Or if they're really that good, and then year two, you see that they're having a solid start here to the beginning of the year, and up early 14-0 here on a, a solid 4A program in Bluffton who through the championship aspirations. Yeah, I would I would say it's a little bit of an upset so far. You know, seeing what Bluffton did to the last 2A school they played in uh, in Whale Branch, be it that that is a smaller 2A Illegal school, substitution on the kicking team. be it that is a, a smaller 2A school, but. Uh, like we see, we were playing. They were playing the top, the one of the best of the best. Hampton County made it to the third round of playoffs last year, so they're they're no slouch when it comes to the the way that they play. And they're they're kind of making their statement, saying, "Yeah, we're here. We're here to stay in this uh in the the two A region or just in the the football competitiveness in Beaufort County." And a little bit of confusion here is that uh, you heard the call of their legal substitution. I thought they were going to enforce it. There on the yeah, kickoff, like but it, it looks like they're going to enforce it on the extra point, again. extra point, and they're going to redo the extra point, I guess, because it's mandatory, I guess, because you, you the options is the re kick, you know what I'm saying, or to take the yards there, I guess. So they're just going to go ahead and kick the extra point right on over. So I guess the score is not 14 0, I guess it's 13 <laughs> 0 is what it's going to go back to. So we're going to go back to the extra point here. Uh, after the flag that was on the extra point, a little bit of a late call there by the uh, by the ref there. And again, it's good. And that kick is good once more. So now back to being 14-0 Hampton County Hurricanes. Bluffton in the black, Hampton County in the white jerseys with the powder blue helmets and dark blue pants. Just while we got a moment here in between the kickoff, just want to say if you've been enjoying our coverage here tonight so far, you can text, I know it's been a rough start, but you can text Buford to 801-801 to help support our coverage of local high school sports. That's Buford to 801-801 to help support our coverage of local high school sports as we make our way around Buford County uh, covering the best in local high school sports here on Buford. Kicked again, once again, a fair caught on that far side. Smartly, number three, Carnell Warren. Warren will uh, there to take the kick. Up. Hampton County trying to take that little yeah. short kick approach. Uh, maybe try to force a drop, a drop ball, line. or you know, drop the turn, or try to you know get a big hit. Well, you know, force a turn over there. So, it's, and it's interesting because usually you see the the squib kick style where it bounces off the ground. That one to kick it up in the air, try to get a high one there. Yeah, you can see Bluffton kind of adjusting to that type of kick. They saw they did it the first two times, and just kind of expected it. Put one of their star receivers out there, the one who whose hands they trust in order to catch it. Uh, so it wouldn't end up in a turnover on an unfortunate play or anything like that. We have this struggling Bluffton offense coming out right now. Just a quick pass over to the Warren right-hand side for about step three out yards. Right about the 35. Oh, that gave him one yard there, so. A couple of yard gain on the play, and second and nine. And nine. Uh, you hope to get some kind of yards out of a screen, but, you know, I don't think one was kind of where you go. McCarthy, five wide here, drops back in the pocket, looks again. Trying to find some room. There goes the pressure. You got a flag on the play as he's taken oh, down. He's taken deep and the backfield deep. Way down to the 10. 
and Bluffton needs to hope that this flag is on Hampton County right now. If the flag is on a false start or anything, that's a decline penalty, and that is a deep hole to crawl out of If you even with Bluffton's explosive pass attack. As you can see right there, McCarthy rolled out trying to buy time and still didn't have anything. Still didn't have anything to throw to. So this Hampton County defense has been great. Kind of locked down so far during this, this first quarter. The first quarter and uh, the little bit of time we played through the second. Just kind of eliminating the pass attack and trying to force Bluffton to run the ball. Great job here by the Hampton County defense. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout trying to get a signal for it. And they're not getting, I think, or is that a signal they're trying to call to their team? I think they're just doing hand signals to a team there. Looks like, looks like a timeout call there. Well, they did stop the clock, but not an official timeout, but a second down in a very, very uh, long way. If I'm just doing the math off the top of my head, that's about second down um, and 30. Yeah. I mean, third, third and 30, excuse me. Jeez. McCarthy launches one to the left side, going for war, trying to get all the yards back and wow. does put a big <laughs> shot down to the left side. Oh, when in doubt, throw it and up. And they call it incomplete. It looked, oh! It looked like one of the refs called it incomplete, but the other one is calling it complete. It looks like it was more than enough complete to me. As we look at the instant replay here, McCarthy, real quick. Two step, three step drop there, and just throws it up down there to the left side. Five yards down in ten. That call confused me dearly just now. <laughs> McCarthy looking for some room. There goes that pressure, and once again getting into that backfield and just hard oh, just to follow it up. They're trying to slow it down the momentum. What a way to do that. That's Brandon Blake getting in there on the defense for Hampton County. And that was one of the, the three main points that I had for Hampton, written down for Hampton County. Uh, you know, only four sacks on the season throughout three games. Or I, I believe it's two, actually. I apologize. Only two sacks throughout uh, four or three games throughout the season. So one of my, my takes was kind of to try to sack the quarterback, force McCarthy into bad throws. And you can see right there, even, even when they got him down, even, even though they did get the, the yardage back on the sack, they still got to the quarterback which is a, a great sign here for the Hampton County. Warren now to the bottom of your screen with another completion, this time not as Warren big as a game. 44. It's going to be about a, about a four or five yard catch there. So still third down, a long way to go. What a big way to get that momentum back to complete that third down and 30. But you, you get a sack right after that, and now you go back. Now you're in third down. And about 16 at the beginning of second and 20 and change. And you can't keep getting into these situations if expect to win the ball game because you're not going to be able to convert it all of the time. Yeah, that third down and 30 was a beautiful ball, beautiful route there by uh, Warren. And beautiful ball by McCarthy, beautiful route there by Warren. But like you said, you're not going to be able to get them every time. That that same look might not be open again. Not so we'll see, we'll see what their adjustment is during this timeout to try to talk to their team and get them back on track on this offensive side of the ball. Well, we'll step away, folks. Let uh, Coach Gregory and crew take a moment to talk to the Bobcats. We'll be right back here on the Deep Protection. Back everybody here on Beaver Tone. Just over 10 minutes to go. Third down to 16. Another long one here for the Bobcats. McCarthy wide open with a completion. He got a first down and more. That's going to be Benjamin Roman Benjamin 
for the first catch in the first down. More than enough. And once again, they convert another long third down on the catch this time. And what a great play Benjamin there by Coach Gregory. Kind of kind of noticed that Bluffton or Hampton County was in a cover three, a single high safety look. Went for the seam beater there with Roman Benjamin, the second leading receiver on the team. And great throw there by McCarthy. This time electing to go with the run, but we got whistles on the way. I don't Ollie see any. I, oh, dirty laundry on the far side. I was trying to find the flag over there, kind of blend in a little bit. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Let's go first up. And false start on the offense. And boy, it is a beauty. I'm going to tell you one thing I do love about Bluffton that mic'd up ref. Yeah, you know, I love it. You get to I was just going to make a comment on, on that. And, we're, and, and folks, and I, and I think you guys love it too because the beauty of that too with him being mic'd up is normally you hear it you know, in the background of what you guys still are. But we, where we are on top of the press box, we are directly behind the speaker so you guys can hear that uh, loud, loud and clear. First down and 15 to throw once again to Benjamin over the left-hand side. And he's going to get about 10 yards Benjamin again of that back. And you can right see Bluffton is finally two. finding their fleet footing, finding their rhythm in this passing game. After having a couple drives of trying to run the ball, started off and you know had that devastating Second pick six, six on that first drive, kind of finding their, their rhythm, finding what works against this Hampton County team. And uh, you can see it in, the, in the, the confidence of the receivers and the confidence of McCarthy just letting it loose. McCarthy. Warren, quick speed out right there. Enough for the Warren first the down, reception. first down, and line, 10. And I know you only need one foot down for high school, but that would have been a completion in the NFL. Managed to get both feet down there ahead of uh, when he got past that first down marker. Short, Great catch there by Warren. And actually, they're going to call a short to not a first down, so third okay. down and one. Is what it's going to be here. He stepped out, quick handoff up the middle. Oh, play and down for the down first the down. The first 10. So that's going to stop the clock for a quick moment as they move the chains there. Mandrell Sanders on the stop for the Hurricanes. And this is a beautiful, beautiful territory. Getting right over, getting just getting into the red zone. Uh, barely here, but then you still got enough. You got eight plays if you want to be able to get back in the game. Four, four to the first down, and then you can still get a first and goal. So this is beautiful. We have some dirty laundry here on the field. Dead ball. False start in the offense. And these penalties are killing Bluffton at the moment. Every time they have something good happen offensively, the penalty happens and the momentum is just shot. First down to 15. We have another flag here on the play. Timeout Bluffton, that's their second. Oh. Excuse me, timeout here for their Bluffton Bobcats. And we'll be right back here on Buford Zone.
back here on Buford's own as we have about a first and 15 here for these Bluffton Bobcats after the false start flag in a stack formation on the right side. Hand off here to Holly. And he's tackled after about a Holly game. Holly on the carry down to the 17. It's going to be second down in about 13 here for this Bobcat offense. Bluffton, you know, two turnovers when they had great field position on their, their past two drives. Looking looking for something different here as we have Mr. Warren, and they're going to call him incomplete. Warren, the intended receiver, they're calling it out. Great hands by Warren being able to bring that ball in, but they're going to say he didn't get his feet down. And I, I don't know if I agree with that one. Looking on the Warren, replay, the looked like he had that, that right out. foot down the second the ball made contact. Looks like they're going to call it incomplete, though. Going to be third down and 13 here for this Bluffton Bobcat offense. McCarthy drops back. And the pressure in McCarthy's face forces a bad throw to Holly. A little too far out in front, and it's going to be fourth Warren down and 13. The receiver incomplete. We'd like to let our fans know that if you're congregating around the concession stand and not eating, if you could please make your way to the stands. Going to help clear that area out. If you're not actively eating, please find your way to the stands. Fourth down and 13, and Bluffton is going to go for it. McCarthy with an empty backfield. Rolls it up to Roman Benjamin, and he drops it. Pass intended for Roman Benjamin, incomplete. Oh, my goodness. Wide open seam there for Roman Benjamin, and wasn't able to bring it in. Gut-wrenching there for that Bluffton offense. Just a lot of mistakes happening Pass tonight. Intended for Roman. And these Hurricanes take over at about their 18-yard line. Quarterback in here for Hampton County. It's going to be Chris Terry. So we have a handoff here to Jordan Bovain. It's going to be tackled after a gain of one. Jordan Bovain on the carry. All right, they're not going to give him a gain. Does it look like no gain, no yards gained no on the play? On the play. It's going to be second down and ten. Second and ten, Hurricanes. Motion here by Mathis. Going to audible to play here is Terry at the line. Dead ball. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Going to have a delay game here on Hampton County. Too long to snap that ball. It's going to be second down and 15 here for these Hurricanes. Terry with the pass to former quarterback Grant. Narelle Grant with the reception. Going to be about a gain of Steps out around three. Going to bring him back to 17 the... 17-yard line. Third and 11. Gain of four, I should say. Going to bring him close to the original line of scrimmage. Third and 11 here for these Hurricanes. Terry. 
Terry with the snap. Drops back. And a little too high there for Mr. Bovane. Had the, had the step on the DB. And it's going to bring out this Hampton County punt team. As now the Hurricanes appear to have to punt it away. here by Terry. Down at about the 46 and a half. But they're gonna mark it at the 47 officially. here for all of the the confusion when it comes to the stream tonight and you know we'd be dropping in and out and we've got plenty of speed and, and Tristan can attest to watching me do the speed test man we got over a hundred megabytes <laughs> of speed here and download we got about 50 we got 50 up upload as well so yeah we got an official timeout heat and humidity but we're gonna stay on here and for a moment and you know just to kind of clear the air a little bit there and, and I, I want to apologize about that because I pride myself on being able to bring you guys a, a great stream here um at weekend and week out every time I go live and you know especially we got our sponsor and our partner BCTV who's been working with us as well but for some reason uh it's just been going in and out on us tonight we've dropped the quality down to to 720p instead of the usual 1080 and we've just been having a little bit of trouble just keeping it live here and it looks like it it's, uh, it's, it's skipping on us right now just a little bit. And so it looks like that might be the reality um, for us here tonight. And it goes out once more on us. So just a, a rough night of trying to stream here for us here on the Dome. And I think what I'll do here is I'll just wait until halftime and I think we'll just turn the laptop off and you know <laughs> restart it that's the best thing that we can do to be able to hope for i've tried going off the wi-fi i've tried going off the internet, ethernet i've <laughs> and tried multiple re restarting the stream well enough multiple times here so they call it heat and humidity time out and it's like you know beautiful weather it's the rain's out and you know so a little bit of shock there first I've down at 10 that one. mccarthy quick throw to the outside and a Died and catch uh, by his guy there, number Nate number the eleven, Nate Omer, on the reception. Bobcats now second and six. So second down and six on the way here for the Bobcats and McCarthy, and done a great job. And if they could just get those big booming plays that they've been hitting, you know, for you know hitting, hitting on offense, if they could just get them on first and second down instead of waiting until they're third and long. Um, that might be able to, you know, open up some things here for them. McCarthy decided he's going to run for it. And it's, we got a QB scramble. Oh, runs over defender and then slides down. I, was like, I think it's a little bit too late to, to slide down. After you kind of run over the linebackers and just a little bit. Catch the linebackers there in the middle. And the middle linebackers got to the back. He said, take that and shake a tackle off. Okay, McCarthy takes First down there. Yeah, bounced off of two linebackers there. And realized he was kind of chat decided to go down, but damage is already done. It's definitely going to be in his highlight tape right there. We have a bomb here intended for Ulmer, and it's too Deep far ball out. Intended for Nate Ulmer, incomplete. Second and ten, Bobcats. First down and 10, McCarthy in the office. Second, excuse me, second down and 10. McCarthy in the office trying to find somewhere to go. And there goes that relentless pass rush 
uh, from Hampton Marcus County once again. Right around midfield. And this Hampton County D line Third has been going 13. to work. Already has more sacks on tonight than they had coming into the game all season. It's a great job by this Hampton County D line. You know, kind of like we said, getting McCarthy to miss throw by just putting that pressure on him, having the, the fear of pressure in his face, and just trying to get that ball out as quick as he can, lead in some missed throws that we've seen tonight. McCarthy looking for some room to throw. He's got Warren in just a little bit a too Warren far. Going to make it incomplete. Down, down. Now for the Bobcats here, having a hard time getting going on offense. This time they got it threaded along, but unfortunately just couldn't get the look that time. Yeah, and like we said, or like I kind of just stated, that was a prime example of it. You know, just kind of got the ball out, had the time in the pocket. But, you know, there's always that, that back side, that uh, thing in the back of your head, just kind of, when is the pressure going to come in? When is the pressure going to go? Or, like, when is the, the O line going to give out? Kind of got the ball out, two out in front there for uh, Carnell Warren. Led to his fourth down here, Bluffton. Punt. He's sent the other way now. Looks like he's going to be fielded at about the eight yard line, trying to get a little bit of a return there. A decent return there, probably about, about 10 yards on the return there. It's a first down and 10 now for Hampton County. He's kind of scored on both sides. Now they got a pick six to start off the game for their first score. Then a big run, about 50 yards there for score number two. The only thing they're missing here is, is a special team score. First down and 10, handoff up the middle there. Looked like it was going to be stopped immediately. Tried to fight a little bit there, but not going to get much more after the fight. And one of the best showings that this Bluffton D-line has had tonight on that on Hurricane that carry right up, there. Uh, you know, Hurricanes has kind of gotten good yardage on mostly all the runs that they've had. And that's the first one where they kind of just stopped them at a yard or just no gain in general. And... Great, like I said, great showing by this uh, Bluffton D-line on that play right there. Second down and nine, a little juke move there to that little sidestep there, trying to stay up on his feet, slips the defender before being shoved out of bounds. Great work there, trying to stay up and refusing Richard to go down. Uh, Richard put out of bounds, right close to the 23. Third down we go, third down, and we'll call it six here for the Hurricanes. And this is obvious, but Bluffton can't allow any big plays right here, giving Hampton County this extra life and more time to run the clock out before halftime is not a good sign here. So if they can stop them right here, that'll be big. Offense can try to drive down the field before half and get some points on the board. Quick throw right there in the middle. That's enough for a first down and 10. Now it's going to turn into a foot race. Nice move to the right-hand side. Ball completed. And then a big first six down six. there for Bovane Jordan Bovane on the reception, going straight down the seam and the middle of that Bobcat defense. And on last drive, we saw Terry miss that throw. It was there, but just to a little too high and a little too far out. That time on the money, and Bo Vane was hit in stride, able to make some moves on the defender and get it up into the red zone of Bluffton. Yeah, great job by Chris Terry, the senior QB, stepping up, making that throw, finding Bo Vane down the middle. Ball complete. Now they got first down and 10. Handoff is up the middle. And a gain of about five yards there. Bo Vane with the carry. Makes it down to around the eight. Second down and five. Here we go. A 
I think the announcer is getting Singletary and Bo Bain a little bit. Can't see the the light, <laughs> the light blue. Um, stuff. And, and that's one of those things where like the cool fonts on jerseys sometimes, the little smaller ones, like they're great. But man, when you're far away, you're trying to read those numbers, man. If you don't got binoculars or a camera to zoom in, at it's, all. Very, it's very hard to see the second down and five. Singletary around the right hand side. Looks like he's gonna make it to the end zone. Stretches out, touchdown. And it'll be a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Touchdown there for the Hurricanes. Looks like we got a little bit of a little bit of instant replay issue there. And Hampton County going up 20-0 on Bluffton. LJ Rivers taking it in for six more. And after that, the, 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 the beautiful start here to the season by uh, Bluffton. Bluffton. Who would have thought that this would have been a situation? We knew Hampton County was good, but 20 go up 21, 20 0, looking for 21 here against Bluffton. Uh, it's a great showing here from these Hampton County Hurricanes. Well, I did some research on the, on the timeout. I know before I said that Bluffton and, or Hampton County is one of the better 2A schools, but I had no clue that Hampton County was the number one in 2A as, as of rankings right now. So Hampton County is. No, no slouch like we said. So seeing this outing is is wasn't expected, obviously. But you know, we are going up against a good two A school who can run the ball. They're kind of your kryptonite if you're bluffing. You know, you try to get momentum off those explosive plays, and your offense isn't really just seeing the ball enough because Hampton County is running the ball, wasting clock. So playing and they've, they've done it all you know they've struggled a little bit but they've just gotten the big plays when they've needed it they got the pick six they got the 50 yard TD run earlier and then now you get a big play uh, to Bovane on third and long you get that big catch down the middle and then just the extra run to cap it off right there by Singletary so Hampton County uh, handling business here in the first half there goes the kick once again they're gonna kick it to Warren over there on that right side who just calls uh, for the fair catch, so first Warren down to right the and like, for the Bobcats. Bobcats first and like you down. said, uh, Hampton County has had the big plays when it matters, but they've also capitalized on these Bluffton mistakes so far. Bluffton has had two turnovers and and good field position in Hampton County to uh, Hampton County territory, and then they've also capitalized on the missed throws or the the uh, the bad snaps that Hampton County has had so or Bluffton has had so far. So Hampton County has just been an all-around better team at the moment. So that's that's just a great show and great show in the coaching there for this Hampton County. McCarthy back at the helm for the Bobcats. First down and ten, looking for somewhere to go. Goes backside on the screen to Warren. Warren trying to dive on the defenders there to get the first down. They're going to give it to him first down and ten. Cornell Warren with the reception for the Bobcats. He makes it up to the 32. 33. And that's another Bobcat. Brought to you by D.R. Horton. Quick throw to, to the right side. Too high that that's time. Ball going to be Benjamin incomplete. incomplete. He's looking for Roman Benjamin there. A little bit of two-minute offense here for the Bobcats before they start the second half. Want to try to get the ball here. They started up on defense. If they get a score here, they're going to be able to get the ball back here in the second half. Yeah, and that's kind of what they're they're looking for right now, just trying to get some, some plays to get them in a good territory for that bomb so they can get this ball back in the second half with some points on the board. As McCarthy's moving around in the pocket, just throws it away. Nothing open for him. That one's second down and 10. That'll make it third down uh, and 10. First one, first down to Roman Benjamin ball incomplete. Second down, and they tried to make something happen there. Plenty, of, third plenty of time to throw on that one, but just couldn't uh, finish it up. Yeah, like we said, other, uh, aside from that that 50-yard bomb that uh, Warren and McCarthy completed on, this Hampton County secondary has been pretty good at stopping this, these explosive plays from Bluffton in the air. That they have third down and 10. Now McCarthy still, once again, this time he's got a little bit of time, but having a roll, and then now the pressure closing down on are going to be dragged down out of, out of bounds for the sack. 26-yard line. Number 44, Malik Terry coming in out of the secondary. 
to be able to make that play. And on that look right there, McCarthy kind of had somebody in the middle of the field. But, you know, rolling the right cross body, that's a hard throw for any quarterback. You could you could see the or hear the fans kind of audibly yelling, he's open, he's open. But uh, like we said, that's a, that's a hard throw for any quarterback to make. He was trying to find a receiver that he that he could have that could make a play and just try to get the first down yardage, but just didn't have anything open right there. Fourth and 18 here, there goes the punt. Ball gonna be fielded uh, just past the 32 yard line there, trying to make something happen here on the le left hand side. Singletary that the was Singletary return. on the return. It looks like we got some. The 42, baby. We've got a, flag. a little bit of dirty laundry on the field. Looks like that call is going to be against Hampton. During the return, holding on the receiving team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. First down and ten for the Hampton County Hurricanes with 30 seconds to go here before the half. But let's see. Uh, you think they go for it or you think they come out and take a knee? Uh, I think they're just going to run the ball, honestly. I, I feel like that's the – the approach Hampton County is going to take, they're going to run the ball. If they get a if they get a breakout run, they'll take it, but they're not really going for that. They're going to just try to take it in the halftime so far. Well, shotgun, Terry, handoff to Singletary there. Just quickly gets swallowed up there by the Bobcat defense. No to go. Excuse me, that wasn't Singletary. That was David Richard on the carry. On the carry. Allen Green and company on the stop. And it looks like we got an injured hurricane down Marking on the field. Two we'll step game. away for a moment, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, here live on Buford Zone. It was second down and eight. I apologize there after the, sh the short carry by Risher. We had the injury timeout on the field, and it looks like they're going to start the clock after the injury timeout, as that would have been a rushing play. So the clock going to keep rolling. 
And they'll let that take us to the second half. We're going to work on trying to get our stream going back up. And we'll be right back here on the zone at the end of the first half. Your score, Hampton County with a dominating 21, Bluffton 0 when we return. Watch your community in action. Beaufort County TV is your home for everything Beaufort County. From meetings to live events to original programming and more. You can find BCTV on your local cable channel, on YouTube, at BeaufortCounty.tv or on the BCTV app. back everybody here live on Buford Zone for the second half and once again it looks like it's a short kick right. over to Carnell Warren, Warren for the, kick the right kickoff for, Bluff, for Bluffton Bluff as Cat usual for Hampton County. So it'll be first and 10 from the Bobcats at about the usual starting point and about the 21 yard line is where they're going to start this ball off here. Yeah and surprising first quarter come or surprising first half coming out of here from this Hampton County Hurricanes team. You know, 4A versus 2A, nobody was really expecting much of a competitive game, but it's turned out to be kind of a blowout the other way. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Let's be clear. You weren't expecting a competitive ah. game. I, Hampton County is – has. I've but been, listen. I've, I've been wanting to see them play for a I've minute. Been, I have been wanting to see them play, but then then again, this is the same Bluffton that put up, oh, that put up 57. On, on my world branch warrior, so you know I had a, I had a one person I had a one person lens, see, 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 see. I had a one thing I had a one one view lens, man. <laughs> I'm about to say yeah, I'm about to say yeah. That's where you that's where the one view lens comes in a little bit. You were judging off well branch, and Hampton County and and, and well branch is is, is is two different things, especially what Hampton County and Coach Hannah has been able to put together with Hampton County uh, these two seasons here. And oh, another interception to the house, another pick six. That for Hampton County. And that looks to be Agent Zero, Jalen Singleton, second on the night. Two rushing touchdowns and two defensive touchdowns for Agent Zero. Big impact here on this game tonight for him. And oh, man, Hampton County is putting on a clinic here tonight. Uh, versus Bluffton right now. Like you said, it's a big showing for them, and they're coming out of Hampton County, coming over here to Bluffton, and Bluffton and looking for a promising season. Man, Hampton County, man, they are, ooh, they are some monsters right now. Here comes the extra point. All right, now it's easy money. Andy, Going to be good. 28-0 goes Hampton County, and, man, when I tell you the den – it's very quiet right now. Yeah, it is very this quiet. Is, you can hear a pin drop from from the from the, the crow's nest where we're at. It it's very quiet right now in this den. Mo granted, most of these fans haven't come back from the halftime snacks and everything, but still, there's a lot of people here at this at this Bluffton game tonight, and this crowd has gone silent. Hampton County has put Bluffton's team on notice. Yeah, I, well, I don't. I well, I think it's past notice at this point. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's a big notice time there. I think they came over, and you know, I was excited. Um, you know, my Pittsburgh Steelers. We went to play the Falcons, and we won that game. And it was, a, you know, a lot of people were excited about that game, and I, I wasn't excited. We kicked six field goals. We didn't score nothing. Our offense looked terrible, and uh, you know, but they posted, you know, coming from Atlanta, from Georgia. Uh, Bankroll Fresh Born actually going to take their return this time, trying to find some room. Reverse down to the left side. We got an opportunity for our first Bluffton score here. Warren now on the right side. I would say, well, who else would it be if this score would have been broke open? There would have been more there. You, you put it in there. That's the danger side. You're trying to do a high kick over there. Warren. You know, probably, probably the defense doesn't get down there fast enough. And that's kind of dangerous. If you're going to short kick it, you want to short kick it to somebody other than one of their best offensive or one of probably the best.
best offensive player if you don't want to go weighted by throwing in the quarterback, Aiden McCarthy. Uh, you know, and they usually, you know, that, that's one thing I hate about the quarterback position. You kind of wait who's the best player. And it's probably Warren, but McCarthy is the QB, and none of this happens with McCarthy. You need a good QB to make all this happen. But first down and 10. First down and 10 here for the Bobcats. Start off with good field position. If they got any chance to make it happen, I'd be here. Ball on the 34. Throwing it up to the right-hand side. He's got Benjamin wide open. And are they going to call it a touchdown? They do. Touchdown, Roman Benjamin. Roman Benjamin with the catch. Put six on the board. Finally, for the Boston Bobcats. And into the end zone goes Benjamin. And I uh, don't call it. It's a little bit early, but you, you sense a little bit of a comeback coming in, or they got a long way to go. Yeah. That, that definitely gives them some momentum coming out of, especially coming off of that pick six that they had. A one play touchdown here for this Bluffton uh, Bobcat offense in the den is not so quiet anymore. And there goes the two point conversion. They get that in as yeah, well. So make it 28-8 for Bluffton, and they're about to come out. And, man, you, you think maybe they got a little bit of a lesson, uh, you know, a little bit a little bit of a chewing out there during halftime about that. So they come yeah. out quickly. They score They score eight, two big plays. Um, they get the two-point two point conversion, and they're ready to go. But, unfortunately, <laughs> they gave up the pick six, uh, the agent zero there to single Singletary uh, to start the half. And so – that puts them in the hole, but they finally get to touch the ball there, and they, they make it happen. Well, I can't say the final. Their second possession, touching the ball, they make something happen. But it's still a long way to go. That shows that Hampton County still on the row of 21, still 20 points down. They're going to have to make a lot of things happen here to come back in the second half, right? Yeah, and this, like we said, you know, a little bit of a momentum shifter right there. You know, the pick six happened. Den was quiet. And now they, they got that offensive play going. Let's see if they can build on, on that offensive play that one play touchdown that they had, and just try to figure out this Hampton County defense. These D, these D backs have been able to just break on everything McCarthy is throwing, and the D line has been able to get to everything. And there's a muff kickoff right there. Ball gets loose, but it's covered. Yeah, quickly gets covered up there uh, by Hampton County, but a little bit of a dangerous uh, play Ball right there. Man. That ball just a little, just a little bit uh, moist there. Uh, from the, the residue of the rain here. We had a slight drizzle, but it's pretty much cleared up. Uh, we put the tent up just in case, which is smart for us. So we'd have been caught in the rain for a little bit of a while. So great for us. And uh, But everything's all good to go here. First down and 10 for Hampton County as they get ready to go on offense for their first time in the second half, even though they've already scored six. And then, by the way, uh, uh, Mr. Singletary just showing off here. Yeah, he's showing off what he can do on offensive and defense side of the ball. On that pick six, we didn't really mention it. That was text back cornerback play. Cornerback play. Uh, saw the curl. It did, it saw the curl developing in his back pedal. Planted his foot in the ground. Broke on the ball and was able to guess where uh, where McCarthy was going. And we came up with six right there. So he gets a carry for about carry. three. Kobe Saunders on the stop. On the short gain, second down and uh, where they're gonna spot it. That's second down and about seven there. Hurricane pick up four, second and six. Second and six, we we'll call it. And one thing that makes this this Hampton County lead right now much more impressive is that, you know, Bluffton has guys that they can designate on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, them being 4A. Hampton County has guys playing both ways. As we can see, Jalen Singleton here is the running back, but he's all – Jalen Singletary, Singletary is the running back, but he's also the, the cornerback one for these Hurricanes. And most of their D, most of their O and D linemen playing both sides of the ball. So you would think that Hampton County would be the one getting exhausted first. You know, just kind of the wear and tear on their body, but that's not what we're seeing so far here tonight. Well, like I said, we still got a long way to go, and the, and that would, you know, like you said, normally be the situation here with the extra bodies uh, for both teams. But I think Singletary, <laughs> as good as he is, I think he might start both ways, little Travis Hunter, like uh, on both sides of the ball, regardless of where he goes. But the numbers, you expect the bigger size. There goes Singletary around the right hand side. He's got a first down and more, trying to find his way, moving his way. Around defenders and man, Singletary is putting on a clinic out here tonight. He's definitely having a great show. 
And that's a great run there by Singletary, but I do want to shout out the block from Jaden Bovian right there, holding his block as a receiver, getting making sure Singletary can get to that outside, try to make a try to get some more yardage on that play right there. First down and ten, moving the chains goes the Hurricanes, and they're gonna take a moment to talk about some things. Uh, looks like we had a small. Small injury time out there, walking off under his own power, able to get a quick Ashton, Ch Ashton Chambers uh, quickly walking to the sideline there under his whole own power. A little bit of a limp there, but glad he's okay. He makes his way to the uh, sideline. He got a head full of hair under that helmet, though. I wasn't expecting. <laughs> well, that's one thing about football players. You just never know. You don't, you know, kind of get can't get personal with them because you don't you know what they look like under the helmet there. I wasn't expecting that. Singletary quickly brought, brought down in the backfield. And that time, Josh Bond, the senior linebacker, says, no way, not David this time. We're not letting you get uh, any big positive yards that time. Yeah, and Risher has been a, a great one-two back to have with Singletary. But this this play right here, like you said, they were able to get into the backfield, stop him for a loss, and, you know, just kind of hold the momentum that Hampton County had on that big run. Terry. Drops back, fakes the handoff, throw over the middle, and that time it's going to be Jordan Bovane for the touchdown, and that's going to be six for Hampton County. Reception, putting it in side for six more. And that is the same play that we've seen three times tonight. That seam streak from Bovane has always seemed to be open, and Bluffton just can't adjust to it. Had a big run, but wasn't able to they had big run after catch on the, the second attempt and was just wasn't able to punch it in. And this time with a short field, able to get six here for Bo Vane. Great play calling here by this Hampton County offense. The kick is up. Easy yeah, money. The kick is good. And one more for Hampton County. 35. They go up by, <laughs> up by 27. A uh, little bit of a rough night here for Bluffton County, but, man, Hampton County, man, uh, putting on their dominance and showing that they're one of the best teams here, officially in the words of Justin Jarrett, I guess, the loco right here. Hampton County, you come over here, you play Bluffton. Now I think two of the stronger teams you got to worry about, I think you got to worry about May River, and I think just history-wise, all roads do go through Buford. Now Hampton County won't play these teams because, you know, different classifications and not on the schedule, but I – I think that's one of those things you think about is that you got a two-way school now. They're balling out in Hampton County in their second year open, and you go for that matchup there, and you wonder, um, are they truly, you know, uh, pound for pound the best team in the low country? You know, as – Or the low toe, our area. As of right now, I would say that they were with the slow as, – as of right now, I say that they are. With the slow start that Buford has gotten off to, and, you know, me just not seeing really – much of May River's film, I, I believe that I've been hearing a lot of a lot of good things about them on local sports. Shout yeah. out Justin Jarrett, but I haven't really been able to see them in person to get a view. You know, seeing how Hampton County is playing tonight, I would say that they they're pound for pound with those those two that you mentioned right there. Yeah, and I, and I always say this because you know Buford. The one thing about Buford that you know has been just hard to unravel is I think Buford has uh, I don't want to say home field advantage. But I, I think they got home field advantage over, you know, pretty much the, the whole Buford County. And what I mean to say that is that so far throughout history, Buford, Buford High has dominated this area in football. And there's been some wins here and there. Um, but the record, if you look it up, and I don't have it off the top of my head, it's a lot of dom it's a lot of wins and very few losses uh, against local competition, regardless of the record that time. First down to 10. McCarthy throwing out to the right side, looking for Warren. And almost and picked almost off again. again. That time it's number four, Terrell Grant, Grant trying to get in on the party. Can't on. And can't, and can't hold, on, hold on to it there. It's going to bring up second down and ten. But, yeah, they've had a struggle right, kind of on this area. And, and most ten. notably when May River looked like they had the opportunity to go to state a couple years ago with Ahmad Green running for about three, four touchdowns a game at the QB position. They waltzed into Buford 8-0 uh, and zero 
and left out when Buford was having a very kind of bad season and that undefeated streak. And there goes Bluffin, full speed track towards the house. Number Come 11, Nate Homer. And I think we're starting to see some fatigue kick in for this Hampton County secondary. Second big play touchdown that they have, they have allowed. Touchdown, Bobcat. Touchdown, Nate Homer. In that first, that, that uh, playing those offensive and defensive snaps is kind of starting to catch up to the Hampton County secondary. And I believe they're going to get ready to set up, and I think they're going to go for two again, actually. though no, they're going to motion over. So here comes the extra point here for Bluffton. So uh, Hampton County still been scoring. They scored twice in the second half, but now Bluffton has scored twice in the second half. So if you want to go 0-0 zero, zero, yeah, right now, the good. score is technically 15-14 Bluffton here yeah. in the second half. They've got that two-point conversion earlier. So now they're in position. If they just keep scoring and kick field goals, now they're in a position where if they could just tie it up, they would have the lead technically with the same amount of touchdowns if they could just get back into this ball game. But 14 on the board, it makes it look like a lot better of a game. But they still got three more to go. Yeah, and one thing Bluffton needs is they need this defense to step up. This Hampton County offense has been kind of running through this Bluffton defense so far tonight, literally, with Jalen Singletary and uh, Riser, but also with the passing plays, the, the one passing play that they've been using, that seam beater, Bluffton comes out and cover three, and that's just the coaching play, the coaching automatic call right there, that seam beater. So they have to watch out for that. But if Bluffton's defense can get it going, get some turnovers, get some uh, turnovers on downs, if any if anything, that would be a huge momentum shifter in getting Bluffton back into this game. Bluffton turns the kickoff here. Hasn't been any trickeration. And they're just going to boot that one deep, and it's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. So it's going to be first down and 10. So we will bring it back. Somewhere it should be around the 25, maybe. First and 10 here for the Hurricanes who have not. Well, they're going to mark it at the 20. But been hard to stop here so far tonight here in the Bobcats. Yeah. These Hurricanes have been kind of sending a windstorm through this den so far. Well, I'll tell you what about the Hurricanes. You talk about a windstorm, that's pretty much all you hear, man, is silence. And even though they score, you get a little bit of cheering there for the Bobcats. But, man, before this place gets rocking, usually you hear a faint amount of cheering all the way throughout the game somehow from the away team. I mean, from the home crowd, but you haven't ever heard that. Like you said, this is the Hurricane win. And a big play in the backfield, and they get a stop. On that man, something that they've been looking forward to for a little bit of a while. Quick well, toss to the carry. outside. Isaiah Bastain takes him down. And a big play there and a large tackle for going. a large tackle for a loss. Uh, what they needed in a great position for them to be able to be in. Second and fifteen. Yeah, and great job there by Isaiah Bastain. You know, he had a he had a covered assignment when that tight end slipped out. Was able to read the play, seeing that the ball wasn't going to come to the tight end. Shut off his block and got Singletary in the backfield. Second down to 10. Terry, the handoff, making a couple of moves. There goes Singletary. Gets a good bit of yards back. That's going to be about a 10-yard carry, though, for Singletary. Singletary on the carry. Saunders leading the charge for the stop. So you go for a great – you go for – from a great – Hurricanes pick up 10. Second down and 15 and position. Now you, you another carry. It wasn't like a big pass play. You allow a run by Singletary. Third down to five is a little bit more manageable than where you'd like to be. You'd like for that to be a little bit inside the five right there, but five right on the money. Terry in the shotgun. Singletary to his right. Now up back. Almost got a little bit of an encroachment there in the first start, and there go the flags. Let's we'll see what the call is here. Go ahead, fire up that microphone, big guy. <laughs> Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. And that's what I thought it was going to be encroachment on the defense, going to move them forward. So, first down first and, 10 from there and 10 for the Hurricanes. And, and the man who committed that encroachment 
automatically dropped down and started giving himself push-ups. You could, you could see his teammates in the background telling him to get strong. Uh, he, just a mental mistake there, which has been a lot of for Bluffton so far, which kind of led to the deficit that they're in right now. They can limit those penalties, limit those mistakes. They'll be back in this game. Terry, hand off the single Terry, trying to find some room there. You get a pack of Bobcats. Malcolm Wharton leading the charge on the stop. Right there on the tackle, but not before he gets about three yards on the carry. Second down and seven. Hurricanes pick up three, second and seven. I believe they're asking a, a, a signal to stop the clock, because I believe it's a little bit off. Let's see what the... Maybe we're off. But we'll keep our clock rolling as we are behind by a couple of seconds. I think I might have forgot to uh, keep the clock rolling once it started after that first down. So we're behind by about 30 seconds or so on the clock. So still. Second down and seven. Here comes the Hurricane offense. The heavy on the right side. Handoff going to be the Risher trying to go wide. A dive at the ankles. No good. Makes another man miss. And multiple Risher defenders having count. to take him down and from Risher. We got flags behind. on the play. And the way that official rifled that. That flag in there, he might play the shortstop back in his day. That was, <laughs> threw that from about the, the 25 to the, the 40. <laughs> but a quick one, he said, make sure you know where that flag's coming from. <laughs> but a good run taken back there by a penalty here on Hampton County. But one thing I did see on that run is Bluffton, it, Bluffton is trying to go low on these bigger backs, especially Riser. Riser is probably there. Offense. Riser is probably their the uh, the power back compared to Singletary being like the, the agility guy, the third down back every time. But uh, they're trying to go low on Riser, but they have to make sure that they get close enough to do it. The, the defender kind of dived early. You can see Riser just kind of pushed them off. Make sure that they get they get up and personal in Riser and then try to go, for, go low on those legs. Well, here we go. Singletary back in on the field. And it looks like we got a little bit of a reverse action. Trying to go around to the opposite side there. We're going to be tackling in the backfield. Bovain couldn't find nowhere Bovain to go. Bovain with the carry, and he's taken down by Camps. Right around the 18, 19-yard oh, line. Smothering in the backfield, nowhere to go. And mark it at the 19, third and long now for the Hurricanes. going to see a rare occurrence here. We're going to see Mr. Carnell Warren here lining up at corner. Third down and more than enough long. That's going to bring up fourth down. Oh, that's going to be intercepted. It's going to be taken away. And the Bobcats looks like they got a pick six. Up there, oh, Bobcats. touchdown, Bobcats. There's a flag on the play. Looks like that one popped up in the air. And it's a pick. Touchdown. And the pick six, let's see what the, the flag is on the play. And Bluffton really wants to hope that this isn't taken off the board there, a little bit of excitement there for them as they want to try to bring this game within two scores. Can't we just talk about how crazy of a play that was. Grant got open on the slant, catches the ball, and then comes down to the ground, not able to hold it in. So first down and 10, Bluffton. There's his third down, there's a block in the back there on the return, unfortunately, no pick six. They do get the ball back, and they do get it back. Let's see where they spot the ball. Or are they going to start off inside of the red zone since it was a spot foul, they said. Well, then they're going to get the penalty, so either way. So from the 20, ball going to be first and 10 on the 30-yard line. 
And I apologize, folks. No, I forgot okay. to award uh, Bluffton two points on that extra point. So the score is 35-15. The score is 35-15. Bluffton did 30. convert a two-point conversion earlier tonight. Empty set for McCarthy. And it looks like Warren uh, just going in motion there from the outside. Dead There's ball. that four receivers. Defense. And they're going to crush it on the defense. So moving forward, first yeah, down and first five. five. Looks like a little bit of, little, maybe a little bit of a mental swinger here for the Bobcats, right? Yeah, like, us, like we said earlier before this Hampton County drive, we said Bluffton needed something on this defensive side in order to get this momentum shifted back into their favor. And that, that was just the thing that they needed as McCarthy takes off. Scramble towards the left-hand side, trying to get towards that end zone. He's going to be tackled at the five-yard line. Aiden McCarthy. And you see Warren was just pointing down. I guess he was trying to tell him to throw it deep to take off. But almost enough to get the touchdown signal a little bit too early. But first down and 10 with first and goal now. For the Bobcats, a little bit of whistle, and I believe we get a timeout call here. Seven officials, timeout, injury, heat and hydration. And an official timeout there, so we're going to take a break right here on a deeper tone. We'll have a little break from the action. While we got that, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. And if you're a student here uh, in the Beaufort County area interested in calling some high school sports, uh, our crew is available for you to join. You can join us here. We meet every Wednesday at the Beaufort Digital Corridor downtown uh, in Beaufort. Great opportunity for some hands-on learning, be able to get inside the games and call the games the right way. You can join us here on the Beaufort Town. Just shoot a message over to us on uh, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And we'll get right to you. And you can join us here on the squad to be able to call some games. We've got a lot of games in action. We've got plenty of sports. So, be looking to for some other sports as well. We got football, volleyball, we got basketball season coming up, boys and girls. And then we go into the spring, and that's where we lose Tristan, the baseball player over at Well Branch, the no hitter under his belt. This is going to be going from us. So if you're interested in spring sports, you want to cover some baseball, softball, soccer, and lacrosse, you could do that uh, as well. Join us on a crew multiple position. You can come in and operate the scoreboard till that time, or the camera, whatever you like to do. And uh, until that time comes, it's a sport of your liking. So, opportunity to join us here on Buford's Zone. And we're back from the uh, official hydration. <laughs> That's our hydra hydration break. First down to go, ball, ball at the first at the five yard line here for the Bobcats. Looking to break this game open to make it a two score game. And we haven't even touched the fourth quarter yet, and they've already, they're have they already cutting down this lead. This is the explosive bluffing offense we expected to see coming out in that first half. Like you said, they must have got a, a good chewing out because this offense is firing on all cylinders right now. And listen, and I, and I tell you what, though, about, you know, about being down. And this is exciting, and, and and I hope Bluffton does come back. Not come back and win. That's not what I'm saying, Hampton County fans. Don't 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 do that. But what I'm saying is just enough to make it a game. And because I love games like these where you can see it in real time. Because a lot of the times you see these games in the professional leagues, and a lot of people said the game was scripted. Oh, this it was rigged. This happens in real life. If you play sports, comebacks happen all the time. Whether it's close or all the way, they happen all the time. And this is, you know, to show students that it doesn't matter what the score is. They got the same amount of time on the clock that we did, and we got an opportunity here. Handoff up the middle. There goes the scrum. There goes the Bobcats pushing their way into the end zone. They get another six, and that's where the big boys come to play. Touchdown, Cornell Holly. And that's when we see them pushing and don't give up on the pile. That's it. That's the five right there of the Bobcats, Lucas Gates. Running back getting in there on the party. Tack on six more uh, for the Bobcats. Make that 21. And let's see if they go for the one or the two here. And it looks like they're going to line up uh, for the extra point. And, man, I'm going to tell you what. To get back in this game, that plan to go for two early is, well, it sounds like a real good decision by Coach Gregory. 
It really is, especially how this defense has played these past couple of drives, being able to, to hold Hampton County in their own territory, either forcing them to punt or coming up with a turnover. So it's a great job, great decision there by Coach Gregory to get the two, even when if they do get those other two touchdowns, they'll be in the lead if they can hold Hampton County so far. And just imagine if they didn't come out and throw that pick six. They'll be down by six with four minutes left in the third. So we got an exciting one here. What, what we thought was going to be an exciting Well, it wound up being exciting. We thought it was going to be exciting. Then it looked like it was turning into a little bit of a sleeper. Now it's back to exciting. And now we are, are we going back to, to JJ's favorite quote, uh, Donnie Brook. Is that, is, that where we're, is that where we're going? I, it looks like it was like one of those words he learned out of nowhere. It's like Donnie Brick, and he just can't let it go. This is Donnie Brick every, for every single close game uh, since last year. I felt like that's the first time I heard him say it. And so ever since then, he's just been launching it. And the kick is off. It's going to be deep, and Bovane is going to let it bounce into the end zone. And, boy, was that close. It looks like that could have got down there towards the one. And Bo Vane might need to, to, to field that one or, and just get down or something. Bluffton was really close to to getting that ball and having the chance to just take walk it in for six. You know, on the kickoff, it's you. It's not a, a fair catch or anything. Yeah. It, if it's the ball's live automatically, so if Bluffton was able to get down to that that uh that end zone in time. That was a walk in six right there. County looking to, to to get an offensive drive going while Bluffton is looking to have a, a comeback night here on their homecoming, which we forgot to mention. I don't know how we forgot to mention that. It's their homecoming. And what a big story that would be on a homecoming night. We got a man in motion to hand off from the right side. Desmond Mathis and lowering the shoulder there on the outside. <laughs> Mathis, young man. He gets that carry and looks like just a decent little six yard, little six, seven yard pickup, lowering the shoulder there at the end. So we got that a was just mean, Mr. Mathis. Could have easily walked out of bounds and avoided contact. Just wanted to show the defender that he's here tonight. Yeah, it looks like we got a flag on the play, and we also got a player down, looks like after the penalty. So we're going to take a quick timeout break. Oh, he's on the took a take quick timeout break and we're going to be right back as we ran that clock down to 406 when we return here on Buford's Own.
welcome back everybody here after the timeout break. I mean, not timeout break, the injury timeout break penalty uh, on the Hurricanes. So it's going to be first down and 20 actually backed up into their own territory. Clock going to roll as it was a run play handoff. Singletary not going to get too much going on there. So it's going to be about second down and 18. Singletary with the carry. Gain of almost three, second down. Big plays can happen at any moment so far in this game tonight. Second down and 18. man who lowered the shoulder earlier, Desmond Mathis, the man in motion for the Canes. The last second play call there, looking to hurry up three, almost a delay a game here if they don't snap it right on time. And the handoff to Singletary around the right side and a beautiful hit right at the line. I believe that's Singletary number six, Ashton Chambers. Ashton Chambers on the stop. And it brings up third down. Third down now and 18. Still, we'll actually give him a gain of about a yard there. So third down and 17. One thing I do like about this Bluffton field, not only is the the setup of it beautiful, you know, the turf and everything, but they also have a play clock here. We, oh, we yeah, can, yeah, we can We can see how much time a team has to run to play, and I, I kind of like that on, on this Bluffton field. Yeah, I, it, it, there's a couple of things I do like about it. Like I said, I do love the play clock. We can see how much time is left. Like three, two, one, barely getting that one off before the handoff uh, to Singletary around the left-hand side, trying to find somewhere to go. He, oh, he makes his way through the traffic, and he's trying to turn it into a foot race, but can't break the line tackle. Jalen Singletary, Singletary have yourself a day. What a heck of a play, and oh, my God, if anybody's oh, watching this. Flip that and submit that to FWSAEWTOC, whoever you need to for play of the play of the of the day right there, play of the week. Jalen Singletary, hold on, folks, we going, we got, we got to go back to that play snap all again. Jalen Singletary, that's what's going. He might have to change his nickname from Agent Zero to the Dean because I don't know how he got out of that tackle. Seemed like he was wrapped up by three defenders, did a nice cutback, and was able to just wiggle his way through through two more and bounce off a tackle to get that first down. A big play there for Hampton County. And off now. Gives a little bit of a break there. There's Risher coming in. Got him a little bit of a reprieve. Going to get a gain of about two. Second down and eight. Risher on the carry. Gavin Carrick on the stop. And don't be shy in the chat, folks. If you're watching us, I know you're scared. We're going to go Second back out again. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little scared, too. You know what I'm saying? But we're playing our games. But if you're enjoying us here, uh, enjoying our live stream here tonight, don't forget you can comment. We will respond back um, as well. So this is friendly, you know, friendly as well. Whether you're cheering for the Cats, whether you're cheering for the Canes, it doesn't matter. Uh, definitely go ahead and tune in there in the comments section. Second down and eight. About a minute left to go here inside the fourth quarter. Back into the game, splitting the defenders, trying to make his way, uh, trying to make himself get a big run. There goes Risher. For the first yeah, down the and 10. Malcolm Gordon on the stop. Fourth quarter. Back oh, into the game. Split this is a nasty one-two punch oh, that these Hampton County Hurricanes have in this backfield. You know, they've been airing the ball out a little bit, have have a couple, have a about 100 yards passing. But this double, this uh, two-headed monster that they have in the backfield is something to, to deal with. Both players have the ability to just have that break. They have that breakaway speed in order to to have a big run any any time of the game, like we saw there from Singletary and Riser themselves. They have a little <laughs> bit of a flop <laughs> job here. Flop there. That's probably my favorite part of, <laughs> of yeah, encroachments. Line. Encroachment, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. That's probably my favorite part of encroachment. Just seeing the O-line flop a little bit. Try to draw the call a little more. 
Just a little bit. Yeah, no, never, no, never too much. Never too much. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little bit of a James Harden there. And there we go. We got the people cheering in in the chat. We got uh, Liz Clavin with the Let's Go Bobcat. Shout out to Liz. Uh, Chattel Gardner for the Canes and Travis for the Canes as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in here on the chat. And they're going to let that time roll on down after the penalty. The the uh, quarter, first down please. and five. That's the end of the third quarter of play here live on Viewport Zone. I want to thank everybody 22. for tuning in here so far. We'll be right back here live on Viewport Zone. It looks like we go from a sleeper to a game here. Hampton County 35, Bluffton 22 when we return. Welcome back, everybody, here live on Buford's own start of the fourth quarter. Quick handoff up the middle. It's going to be enough for the first down and 10 for the Hurricanes. They just keep on moving the chains, by the way, with the ground and pound here. Yeah, like we said, that was their their main goal coming into the game in the, the previous games they played the before. Just move the chains with the, the run game. The Tire that D-line out. Like we said, we, they Bluffton has the people to switch out. We haven't really seen much of that. The only time you've really seen Bluffton switch out their D-line to one of their players' helmets come off. It's like a, a slight cramp or anything that they have to come out the game. But so far, we've seen probably the same starting secondary and D-line all, all game for Bluffton. We're keeping it going. Man in motion there. And it looks like we've got a flag on the plate. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. And a little bit of sigh of relief for the cats there. And it's like, they're going backwards. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Either way, that might have been a flag, even if the person didn't jump off sides. They had one second left to snap that ball. Uh, Hampton County has been cutting it close with these, these play calls, especially when a player goes into motion. They might want to try to limit the the complexity of their plays a little bit. Just try to get this ball off, see what they can do. Then if they do have enough time where they know what play call is going on, then start sending people into motion. Terry Risher slips down there at the line. Unfortunately, they are going to change. So second, second so down, second down and 13. And mama, there goes that man, Mr. Jalen Singletary, back onto the field for the Canes. I think we already say they're having a great night. Two defensive touchdowns, two offensive touchdowns. Almost had a third one there. He was able to win that foot race. But, you know, just a big night all in all on this football field. I, I remember watching an interview with him on uh, local sports with Justin Jarrett. Just a, a, humble, a humble young man, you know, just being able to sit behind uh, that great running back that they had last year. And, uh learn from him and not kind of complain about not getting snaps or not not seeing the field as much as he wanted to. And now he's showing with the world what he can do on this football field here tonight. And as we go to timeout, we are in the fourth quarter, so it's time to shout out none other than our Justin Jarrett from Loco Sports and the Loco Lowdown Podcast Monday through Friday at 9 p.m. Actually, I changed it. I think it's 9.30, 9.30 p.m., but they are live right now in the Loco Lowdown uh, the Friday nights, uh, the guys, Justin Jarrett, Max Siraj, Wes Kerr, and the crew uh, live on local lowdown. Catch them 
on multiple platforms, Facebook and YouTube, as they wrap up all the sports around the loco. Uh, that includes all your Beaufort County, Colleton, uh, Jasper, Hampton counties, uh, a little bit of Est Estill as well. So they're wrapping it up, trying to include everybody here. Uh, so don't forget to check them out. They're live right now. Post-game highlights, interviews from coaches and players alike. Um, so be great place to wrap up uh, low country, loco sports. And go check out Justin Jarrett and the crew on the loco lowdown. Second down and 13. Out of the timeout by Hampton. Empty backfield for Terry. And we got a quick motion and a fake handoff and nowhere to go as Bovain once again can't get that reverse going. And I tell you, that's one thing they've been able to do is stop that reverse from Bovain. Yeah, that reverse hasn't really gone anywhere, but just Hampton County trying to have the threat of it every time when they send Mathis and uh, Bovane into motion, they're trying to have the threat of to kind of breaking one with the, the agility and everything they have on those outside. But the Bluffton has done a great job containing it. Just the inside run that they're really struggling with so far. Bobcats on the defense, looking to close out the Canes. The Canes looking to continue their scoring streak. Looking for that seam again, and it's caught. Laying out for it, Desmond Mathis. Touchdown, Hurricanes. And that's a great example of just wanting it more. Putting his body on the line. Allowing to extend this lead here for Hampton County in this fourth quarter. Great job there by Mathis and great throw there by Terry. Got to stop the clock, put the six on there. Here we go for the extra points. 41-22 is the score. And every time you think Bluffton has a chance of coming back, Hampton County puts another score on the board and they started off the second half with another pick six. Singletary got two of them tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Two of them. One when we were having stream issues, still, <laughs> still, I think we were still able to catch that one, but the other one we definitely caught. Singletary, like we mentioned, two pick sixes. It looks like they're, the offense is going to stay on the field here, try to go for two. Yeah, try to even it up. Like I said, they get in that situation. Bobcats, Coach Hayden Gregory, called that design to try to give them the chance to get the lead if they were to come back. Singletary falls short right at the line and see if they're going to call him in here. And they do. And the the two is good. good. So tack on two for Hampton County. So they erase what would be an advantage uh, for Bluffton if Bluffton was to come back and equal them in touchdown there. As we go to the kickoff. And we got Courtney McHale checking in with the Let's Go Canes. Checking in as well. Shout out, Courtney, joining us here in the chat. 43-22 goes, goes the score. They just changed the score back there, awarded it to the wrong team. I was looking at the scoreboard, and they had, <laughs> they had 43 24 up there for a second, and I'm like, hold on, wait a minute now. I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> and Hampton County once again going for that short kick, and oh, it looks like they finally get it. It's going to be Hampton County ball, folks. They're going to get a chance to score again as they get the ball. Hampton County. And this time they kick it away from the board, board, which I thought would have been a smart thing to do. He's on the other side, and you see him on the other side, Warren, coming in the back of your screen with a hand on his head, looking a little bit like Will Levis there in the Tennessee Titans. And so Hampton County 
is going to get the ball first down and 10. And you don't expect to, to see. Well, it wasn't really an onside kick, but they've been doing that the whole game. But they've been kicking it to Warren, the, one, the best offensive player, which wasn't the smart. I think they should have did, been did that. And I think that might have been the scheme. Let's kick it to Warren. They don't think we're kicking it to their best. Let's kick it to him all game. And at the last second, we're going to kick it to the other guy because he's been sleeping all game. Not only right? that, kicked it into the hole where he would have to run up and make a tough catch, especially in with the the condition, the weather conditions that they're in right now. Trying to make a tough catch. And we have Riser just fighting for extra yards. Yeah, just, just moving the pile. And once again, first down and 10. No need to uh, first down and 10. But we got a flag on the play. I don't. No flags on the play. First down and 10 as they keep on moving here on Beaufort's own. Hampton County. Dominated performance here tonight. Terry and Risher in the backfield. Singletary with the break. Hand off. Risher. Risher. Just barreling forward. Risher Another first down. down Risher. Just making the pow move. And what else can you ask for but to move the chains for Risher? Looks like we've got an injury. Time out. We've got an injured cat down on the turf. There for the Bobcats. We'll step away for a moment. We'll be right back here on a few for Tone. Welcome back, everybody, here on Deeper Zone after the injury timeout. First down and 10 for the Cames. Terry in the Terry in the gun. Richard to his left-hand side. He's moved the chains two times. Oh, this time he's not going to. Oh, he moved the chains again. I thought he was almost going to make it there to the end zone. That last second burst before getting tripped up there Richard, right you know, at the end. Richard, Richard with another, another first down and 10. Oh. This That's time, three carries for oh, 30 yards again, right there. The for the Making it first down and goal. And Risher and these Hurricanes are looking for the, the knockout blow, if you will, right now. You know, anything can happen in football, but it would take a lot to score about 30, 30 points in, in six minutes if they run this clock well. So Bluffton's still in the game, don't get me wrong. But this would probably be, if they score right here, it's probably one of the, the, the final scores of tonight. Count them out. First down and 10. I mean, first down and goal. And, oh, a big stop for the Bobcats. If they don't blow the whistle, Richard still standing up. And, man, listen. Singletary, Singletary is obviously the guy. But Richard, man, you become a fan of this guy coming in. And one, two, one, two, man, just to take that crowd of Bobcats defenders and just to reverse out of there. You've seen him carry and push the pile multiple times already tonight. And for him to just get in there to get stuff, but stay up and still try to reverse out of there. He lost yards on the play. Let's, let's, let's be clear. He lost yards on the play. It's yeah. a negative play regardless of how you look at it. But just the amazing just body control to be able to stand up against the D lineman like that and, and to stay up. Great work there uh, by Richard. No 
No break because he's still in the game. He gets the toss to the right-hand side, trying to beat it to the – make it to the pylon and can't make it as he runs out of bounds again, once again. Of bounds by Caleb there is a flag down here. We got Sophia Marie Jones checking in now for us as well. Chrissy Romaine checking in for the Hurricanes with two hearts and Courtney Mitchell. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of taunting there. It's, it's a category <laughs> five hurricane uh, in the in the midst right now here in Bluffton. Holding penalty against and that penalty going to be against the Canes. A holding penalty there going to back them up a little bit. The ref must be tired of talking, didn't mic up that time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there he goes. 40. Oh, never mind. Offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. And I guess the broadcaster Jinx works on referees too. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> weird Second how that it, it, it's weird how that works when you least expect it. Whatever you say they're not doing, they do it immediately after you say it, which is crazy, which is crazy work. So second down and a long way to go, still in goal. So they have to score. But now they're on the 20-yard line. Hand off to Risher. Burst through the middle. He's only going to get about six yards, so 14 uh, yards to yards go, to go to still the for, the, for the Canes. For the Canes. I said for the Canes. Oh, I thought you said Florida Canes. <laughs> I was about to say, wait, what? For the Canes. Apologize, man. Like these canes are going to go for it here. Or it's third down. What am I talking about? Hello, oh, Josh. We got to start the clock there. We're a couple seconds behind. We'll let it keep on rolling on the next stoppage and keep you updated as we go. 6.05 in regulation. 6.05 is the official time. Third down and 14. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout, canes, which means we're going to let our clock keep on rolling here so that way we can catch up. Don't forget, if you enjoyed our coverage tonight. Time out Hampton, that's their second. It'll yeah. also be an extra one minute heat and hydration timeout. And an extra one minute as well, so about a two minute timeout I guess we're going to have here. Don't forget, if you enjoyed our coverage here on Buford's own, you can text Buford to 801-801. Help support our coverage of local high school sports. That's Buford to 801-801. Help support our coverage of local high school sports here in Buford County. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back here on Buford Zone. Welcome back, everybody, here live on Buford Tone after the timeout break. A little injury and, you know, a little hydration timeout there, a little double whammy there. Third down and 14 here for the Canes. Handoff. Going to be the Richard, not going to get too far, but we got flags Jake flying out all over the place. There's a flag out there amongst them. And it's going to be holding on the Canes. So a lot of great things they've done tonight. A lot of bad here on this drive here, looking to seal, trying to seal the game. Yeah, especially on, like you said, trying to seal the game on this drive. They are wasting some clock with this long drive, you know, the, the backwards penalties and everything. But you do want to try to walk away with this drive with some points, at least get three. And with this position right now, I, don't, I really don't know how good their kicker is. He's been banging the extra points, but I haven't seen his leg in order to to see if he's able to, if he has the range for a longer field goal. So I, I say that they try to just 
get it within the, the 20, get it into the red zone, and then try to let your kicker 40. take it from there. So they're going to decline the penalty, so that way it goes to fourth down. They say, hey, we'll take our chances on one play versus uh, giving you the opportunity to, to get another first down, which Risher has just been churning out uh, for them and risk you getting six. And it looks like you're going to get exactly uh, what you asked for here as I think the kicking unit is coming on uh, to the, on the field. Kick is up, and it's good. Tackle on three for Hampton County. And shout out to Mr. Ralph Sullivan who's making the extra point kick. And what, what do you mean you don't know about that, Mr. Announcer? <laughs> that, that was kind of. <laughs> yeah. That one looked good. Yeah, I would say that's where you come in as an announcer. That's just, yeah, over the loudspeaker. You don't, you know, that's kind of. But 40. <laughs> But 46-22 goes the Hampton County Hurricanes. And some conversation. Looks like we got some dirty laundry on the play. Dead ball. Delay a game on the offense. And that's a good delay a game. Five-yard penalty still fourth down. Going to back a little bit. So it looks like they're going to re-kick it. I think that's might have been what he might have been referring to. I didn't catch <laughs> I didn't catch that on the play clock. Yeah. It might have been expiring. That's what he was doing. You I was mentioned like, the fact that we love the play clock and that we didn't pay attention to we it. We did on that not one. pay attention to it at, at all on that play, bro. Either way, the yards don't matter. Still fourth down and goal for the Bobcats. At least on my side, trying to try to eyeball it here from up here, but. Gonna send Mr. Sullivan out to do redo another field goal. This one a little five yards longer. The kick is up, and this time it is no good for the Hurricanes and the. Bobcats are going to take over first down and 10 here. Ball going to be on the 15-yard line, and they're going to have to get uh, 21 points, and they're going to have to get 21 points fast. Hurricanes leading 43-22. Five minutes left. This is going to be a tough stretch here for Bluffton. They're trying to, trying to make this comeback on their homecoming night, like we said, but it's still possible. Just need a touch, need a, a score here and ability to get the ball back, whether it's through kicking or whether it's through the defensive side of the ball. First down and 10. McCarthy tried to do a quick throw over to Omer, just missed his man. Second Omer down and 10. Get nothing going on that. Try to get a quick throw on the back side to Omer. A little bit off the mark there. Probably maybe, maybe he's supposed to go up a little bit, try to run into the screen. Yeah, they kind of had a miscommunication on that same type of play earlier. And you see uh, McCarthy during that play, he was kind of confused on what Omer was doing. But finally, uh, still didn't get it cleared up. And McCarthy kind of scrambles here. It's a couple of yards, about five. Run out of bounds right around the 25. Yeah, just a little, just a little, just a little bit. They'll mark it about the 24. Third down. Third and six. For the Bobcats. Smart play to McCarthy to at least not try to make a play to run out of bounds, try to stop the clock. They're going to need all the time they can get. Quick throw to Warren on the outside, and the ball going to be dropped. He's looking to run with it. So fourth down now for the Bobcats. 
Bobcats have to go for it in this position. This will be ruled incomplete. He caught it out of bounds, I believe. Fourth down. wide for McCarthy. Look for Warren at the top of your screen. Got the, the neon green shoes. Deep throw to the left-hand side. He goes the other way. He's looking for Omer. And that ball going to be That's incomplete. Trying incomplete. to take the deep shot down the left-hand side. He got the one-on-one. -on -one. And he goes for Omer on the left-hand side. And that's a good turn. That's a good turn. For the Bobcats. And yeah, I think that was the the incompletion to, to seal the game Hurricane off here. These Hurricanes the had a great line. game tonight. Uh, you can see in the chat they were putting <laughs> they were putting a bunch of storm emojis. Yeah, here These, comes the storm emojis had, now. <laughs> yeah, they had a bunch. There was a Category Five for sure in this first half. Second half kind of kind of cooled down to Category Three, if you will, and turned it back up when they needed to. Uh, these Hurricanes had a great performance here, especially Mr. Jalen Singletary and uh, the, the running back duo and uh, Riser as well. You know, just great game offensive and defensive side of the ball. Get first down and 10. Terry, handoff to the right hand side. Break a couple tackles there. New running back into the game. That's going to be Roderick Lodeholt listed as the QB. They're going to get the carry. I believe that was Roderick Lodeholt with the carry. And looks like we're going to get another hydration timeout, sounds like. So we'll step away for a moment. 43-22. Welcome back after the timeout break. Quick handoff up the middle. We gain a couple more yards there, just trying to run the run the timeout here. And it looks like we're gonna get a timeout bluffed. And, and they and they called a timeout. They should have bluffed the timeout before the break, so I put them at two, and then it looks like they called one just now. So that's gonna put them at one timeout. Result of the play is third down. Timeout bluffing. The play clock operator, please put 4.33 on the game clock. 4.33. 4.33 is the call that they want to put on the game clock there. I guess we could do that. And while we're on this little timeout break, these Hurricanes, you know, uh, just just became a, a team last year. You know, combined Estill and Hampton County became a team, went deep in the playoffs last year, third round. And now they're showing what they can do two-way versus four. And they're still showing that they're, they're one of the best two-ways in South Carolina, if not the best two-way in South Carolina, the performance they're putting on here tonight.
teams making their way back onto the field. Fourth down, I mean, excuse me, third down and three. Throw up with a pistol here. Terry, load hold behind him. And uh, Terry rushing up, trying to get a false start. They're trying to draw a call. And it looks like we're finally going to get a timeout call, it looks like. Come on, Hampton, that's their third and final timeout. And that's going to be no timeouts left for Hampton. We'll take a break and we'll be right on back. Welcome back, everybody, here live on Buford Zone. Third down and three, just over four and a half left to go in the fourth quarter. Hampton County with four, with 43, bluffed in 22. Terry at the QB tried to draw the offsides at the last second uh, before we left, but now they get it to Lone Holt, who's going to go around the left-hand side for the first down for Hampton County. And they keep the change, moving first down and 10 for the Canes. Time rolling down, going down just under four minutes. Hurricanes taking their time, and Lone Hook going to be tackled in Rip the backfield. In the backfield. So second down and goal. It was the first down and ten. It was the first down and goal. It was second down. Second down and goal now. All 13 students yards are to go. On rides after the ball game. If you go ahead and make sure you you had them have your rides called, and they're on the way here so that we can close down the field as soon as possible after the game. Make sure your rides have been called and we'll be waiting on you when the game ends. Thank you. See, they doing the announcement a little too late, man. They got to <laughs> start it about like five minutes, seven minutes. Ooh, you know, you know these, student, these students don't, don't, don't get it. Don't start calling the rides till about three minutes left in the game. You got you to gotta make that announcement about seven, five minutes. <laughs> Hand off now towards the right side and it looks like we're going to get another score for Hampton County, but we got flags. Uh, on the play. I don't have a name for him, but we've got a flag down. Two flags. And it's going to be holding. Appears to be holding. For Hampton County, on Hampton County, so that's going to bring him back. That's Nasir Morris on the carry. So still second down in goal, but a very, very long way. Outside of the red zone now, Point. technically. Offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Let's say how often do you see second down and goal from <laughs> from outside of the red zone? Not a lot. <laughs> Normally only see it when it's like an intentional ground and penalty or something. Or 
course, uh, and in motion again. But this time, the handoff is going to be the Lone Holt spin move inside of traffic. We're going to be stopped way uh, short Run there. Third the down and goal. Carry. He'll make it down to around the 19. Third down, Hurricane. Third down and goal for the Hurricanes now. Different man. I was trying to get everybody to touch the ball. Terry to throw over the middle. Ball going to be complete. That's Don Yay of Russell on the touchdown the for the Hurricanes. Russell they Moore. strike again. Don Yay Russell. And once again, straight down that seam as you mentioned before. Yeah, just adding salt to the wound here, this Hurricane team. Just kind of making their statement on this Bluffton field at the den, if you will, if you would. Uh, that's going to be more than enough. And we got a 50 burger. For Hampton County right now over Bluffton, 50-22. And regardless of the score for Bluffton, 50 points. Jesus. Yeah, Bluffton put up a good fight in that second half, but Hampton County, you know, just dominant on both sides of the ball really tonight. Uh, like we said, Bluffton had some fight in them. Had a couple big throws uh, for touchdowns here in the second half. But that first half really set it. Set, uh, set the tone here for the Hampton County team. Hampton County will enter the den undefeated and leave the den undefeated. Hampton County set to kick off. Let's see if they got another one uh, up their sleeve here. Another high kick. This time, Warren on the opposite side. He picks it up, trying to make his way around the left-hand side. He's got a little bit of green grass over there, but it looks like he's going to be ran uh, out of bounds. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Bobcats. It's hard to miss Warren with those, those green gloves. You know, you just kind of know where he's at all times, yeah. the, every time he's on the field. It's one of those things where you kind of know, you know, <laughs> know who he is. 50-22 here with just two minutes left to go. And with just over two minutes left to go. McCarthy set to snap. Cordell Holiday to his left. He's going to get the toss. And go down the left-hand side. He's going to run the bounds there. Cordell Holiday on the carry. About the 40-yard line. Second down and five. Second and four. Oh, four. Touche, Mr. Commentator. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> McCarthy throws one and hits Warren. It's one one on five. Warren, he's got a he's got a little bit of a convoy there and into the end zone. Goes the Bobcats. Carnell, Carnell Warren. Getting into the end zone for the Bobcats. Uh, a little, what you want to say, a little too, little too late. Touchdown, Bobcats! Touchdown! End zone there for the Bobcats. Yeah, and that's something we didn't really see out of Bluffton too much. You know, since they were down so much, it seemed like they kind of just forgot about the middle of the field. Kind of just trying to do deep shots on the outside. You know, hit the middle of the field towards the end of the game. Got, got Carnell in space and was able to have him score a touchdown. Kick is up. 
And it's and good off of the Piggy foot Piggy. after Ethan Cartmel. Forget if you enjoy our coverage, you can text Buford to 801 801 to help support our coverage of local high school sports. That's Buford to 801 801 to help support our coverage of local high school sports here on Buford Jones. Short kick, block the luck. They're trying to go for the onside, and Warren, Warren, Warren and grabs the onside kick for the Bobcats. So it's going to be first down, first down and ten for the Bobcats. Now yeah, they're going to. Yeah, Warren got up the there bed. for that one. Climb the ladder. Yeah, high bouncer, and usually you think you probably have to go down there and go for the hit or go on the ground, but having to go up for it, you got the perfect guy here, starting wide receiver, Carnell Warren. First down and 10, McCarthy going deep immediately and missed, the guy, yes, missed his guy, Omer, or incomplete. Oh, missed uh, Omer a couple times today here. Yeah, yeah he's seen Omer on that uh, on that seam route a lot of times. McCarthy has missed him about a, a good two, three times. You know he's going to be thinking about that when he's watching film or whatever. But uh, there's not much he can, can do at the moment now. Game's out of reach. Just trying to. Trying to get some some garbage time stats, some some stats to put on his highlight reel and everything, or some film to put on his highlight reel and everything. Almer, this time he's gonna be he sacked in the, in the backfield, nowhere to go. The 44, balls. Malik Terry and County Taylor getting in there to that backfield. Oh, and did somebody call the timeout? I guess Bluffton called their last timeout. I didn't see that. A Bluffton. So that we'll is their last timeout. Take a break and we'll reset our clock to 1.34. We'll be right back here on Buford Zone. Welcome back, everybody, here on Beeper Zone. Third down and 21. McCarthy trying to find somewhere to go. Launches one deep. Finally, he connects with Omer deep down the field. Being Russell trying to stay up. 
And drag out of bounds at the two yard line. Finally gets the completion to Nate on the line. First, he's looking for a wow here tonight. First down and 10. Homer with the reception. They are inside the red zone, looking to punch it. They're going to put it at the two-yard line. And that was Bluffton's last timeout there, so no timeouts left for either team. Homer looking to throw one up to the left and incomplete as he's looking for it. Try to go for the jump ball to Warren. I mean, they've tried to throw it over the head of Terrell Grant a couple of times tonight, and he's always been uh, in position. Yeah, he's, he's, he's stayed in great position all night tonight, especially on those fade balls with the taller Carnell Warren uh, down there in that red zone. That's what Bluffton really targets a lot. He's been in great position, able to, to play good defense, stay on his uh, inside, or stay leverage with him so that he can defend the inside and the outside. That one just slips through Warren's Again, hands. Warren incomplete. Third and goal now here for the Bobcats. A little bit of morale boost. I mean, you got, you know, just over a minute left to go. And I mean, this would be uh, a high school game for the ages if they were able to come back. Yeah. Uh, with a minute a minute left to go here, especially on homecoming. It would definitely be uh, something to talk about. A third down and goal. Looks like McCarthy's going to go for the QB sneak. Drives in. Touchdown. Bobcats. Man, they get six more on the board. And McCarthy just finally decides, ah, you know what, I'm just going to squeeze in there. You're going to take my time. Is everybody in position? Coach, you said something. What was that, huh? Hut, hut, hut. Touchdown, Bobcats. Touchdown, Bobcats. <laughs> and I got to go, just go for the extra point here. And you got to assume that if the Bobcats get the ball back, they're just going to go ahead and do a little bit of a kick. And the Cardinal kick is good. 50-36. As we get ready to go for the kickoff here. With just over a minute left to go and no timeouts left. So if Hampton gets the ball here, you can assume they're going to take a couple knees and end this one. Yeah. We'll hope. Hopefully. <laughs> you have to say hopefully, right? Yeah. Never know. That pride might get get the best of them. Try to go down, score another another <laughs> touchdown. You never know. So we're sending, trying to say they're sending a message, right? Yeah. Sides going for another onside kick, going to bounce. This time, Hampton County going to recover. And Malik Terry going to one, one hand. Malik Terry going to one hand that one and dive on the ground. So first down and ten here for Malik the Hurricanes. Terry jumps on it. Hurricanes now first and ten from their own 49. Got some extra bodies coming in, so it looks like this probably might be a victory formation. It's always funny when they try to set this up. It looks like nobody knows uh, where to go. <laughs> to the, what are we doing? What? They're running a play? Well, I normally line up out wide. We just taking a knee, man. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, delay, a game, delay a game on the offense there. They're going to go back some more than they, what they plan to do, but either way, they're going to plan on losing yards anyway. They try to line up here for the victory formation. And he is going to take a knee, 40 seconds on the clock. Apologize, no flag. It's time going to roll on. It's going to need at least one or more knee. 
to end this one. Gets under 40 for the final knee. That's going to be the final play here of the evening. So the players and the players going to start making their way to the sideline there, get ready to shake hands there. And Terry is trying to shake hands. <laughs> with the ref just a little bit. And that's going to do it for the evening. That's going to do it for the evening. Your score, Hampton County 50, Bluffton 36 here on the Jimmy I want to thank everybody for tuning in and have a great night.